Ahoy! Hashtag Zach here. Today, I'm going to tell you all about the history of fighter aircraft in the United States. The United States military was the first military in the world to incorporate aircraft in combat roles. This was in 1909. However, within a decade, the United States had fallen behind in fighter development, and during World War I, we had to use other countries' designs for our aircraft. It wasn't really until the 30s that we had developed our own fighter design that we mass-produced and shared with others. From 1935 to 1940, the United States manufactured 15,000 of the T-6 Texan fighter. Most of these wouldn't actually serve with our military during World War II, but would be exported to other countries. However, it provided a solid base for the training and establishment of fighters and a fighter force for the United States. We took this foundation and, by the end of World War II, we had the largest most technologically advanced and best supplied air force in the entire world. This is the P-38 Lightning. It was developed in 1939 and because of its strange appearance was dubbed the fork-tailed devil. Its exceptional design allowed it to carry twice the firepower of normal fighters, but still have the same speed and agility. It also had quite a significant range so it was used across the world by the United States and its allies as a fighter, as a bomber, and even as an escort and scout. One thing the P-38 could not do, however, was land on aircraft carriers. This job, then, was reserved for the Corsair fighter. These Corsairs would usually be accompanied by SBD Dauntlesses, which provided a lot of heavy-hitting firepower. Having carrier-based aircraft was very important because the United States had to attack Japan multiple times, and striking across the ocean is very dangerous without air support, and it's far away from any runways on continents or islands. So you need an airfield on the water with your ships. That's where the carrier aircraft come in. Now, by far, the most famous U.S. military aircraft from World War II was the P-51 Mustang. This was designed for the sole purpose of being an interceptor. Its only job was to shoot down enemy planes. Because they were exceptionally light, they could carry large fuel carriers on the underside of their wings, extending their range so they could fly deep into the heart of Germany or any other enemy's airspace and back without running out of fuel. This was especially important because the large bombers the U.S. Air Force was using to destroy German war factories couldn't defend themselves against enemy fighters when they were flying over the heart of Germany, and no other fighter aircraft had the range to support them and protect them the whole way there and back. One aircraft that often goes very underrated is the F-6F Hellcat. It was by far the best carrier-launched aircraft in World War II, and even though it was designed over a year after the United States entry, it shot down almost three quarters of all the Japanese aircraft that were destroyed by the United States. Now we're going to get into the post-World War II US aircraft. This is where it becomes focused on jets and the new designs come out a lot less frequently as there's not very intense war to necessitate a very rapid development process for new aircraft. However, they start getting a lot more expensive and a lot more powerful. The first major aircraft in this category is the F-86 Sabre. It was a fighter jet that served in the Korean War first and then with many other countries for nearly 50 years. The Sabre was widely considered the best fighter jet in the world until 1960 this is due to its armament of light cannons and rockets, which allowed it to take on a wide variety of different targets and enemies with the same kind of weapon system every time. By 1960, the F-4 Phantom had replaced the Sabre as the main fighter for the United States Air Force. It was also very versatile, 
but this time it was because it could carry a wide variety of different missiles and cannons under its wings. It was very modular, meaning that they could customize it for whatever job they had to use it for. When the Phantom carried its maximum weapons loadout, it could be very slow and hard to steer. However, it had dominating firepower. These attributes led it to be nicknamed the Lead Sled. In the mid-60s, the F-111 Aardvark was also developed. Although it was initially intended as a fighter, it was terrible in this role. However, when supplied with direct guided munitions, it served as an excellent precision bomber. Basically, it would fly low over contested airspace, often enemy controlled, drop the bombs on a specific target, and then get out of there fast. At this role, it served excellent and even lasted until the 2000s. Beginning in the 1970s, United States aircraft entered a new era with hypermodern jets able to fly at thousands of miles per hour, carry much more significant armaments, and also take a lot of hits before suffering any major damage. The first of this new generation was the F-14 Tomcat. It was designed as a carrier-based aircraft to defend the fleet from incoming enemy aircraft and missile attacks. If enemy forces were detected, it would fold back its wings and fly exceptionally fast to the target. It would engage opponents from far away using new high-tech AIM-54 missiles. These AIM-54 missiles were massive and could fly over a hundred miles. And because the F-14 could be launched from an aircraft carrier, the Tomcats not only guaranteed aerial superiority, but also protected the fleets from enemies there as well. Then came the design of one of the greatest fighter jets of all time, the F-15 Eagle. It was large and could not only carry a massive amount of missiles and weapons, but also could take multiple hits to its engines and still fly back to base. Due to these factors, the F-15s and many online simulators could take out 10, sometimes 15 enemy aircraft before it would be shot down itself. And in the real world, F-15s have shot down 115 enemy aircraft in combat situations, while none of the F-15s have ever been shot down. While the F-14 and the F-15 were exceptional aircraft, the amount of fuel, spare parts, weapons, time, and just overall resources and money it took to keep them operating was enormous and kind of unbearable if you're maintaining a global air force. A light, pretty cheap, but still effective patrol aircraft was necessary. This is where the F-16 Falcon comes in. It employed some of the lessons learned from the F-14 and F-15 for how to make an aircraft strong, powerful, hardy, and fast. However, it did it in a much simpler way, reducing the cost while this did come with a slight degradation of its military capabilities, and it wasn't able to fight as well as the F-14 or F-15, it served very well in its purpose of being a cheap, light patrol aircraft, while still being able to hold its own if it's not outnumbered. The F-16 Falcon, now called the Viper today by many pilots, was so effective in this role that they created a design based on the F-16 for aircraft carriers to launch. This new design became known as the F-18 Hornet. It ended up serving the role of an affordable multi-role platform for aircraft carriers very well, and even had special design features so that it was less susceptible to damage by the harsh, salty air of the oceans. Around this time as well, the Marine Corps began using the Harrier II, based off of a British design. This aircraft, although it came with a degrade in military effectiveness, was extremely desirable for the Marine Corps because of its unique ability to take off straight up and down, 
and not need a runway in order to be launched. Once the 1980s began, we entered a new era of air combat where stealth technology was available. This allows aircraft to avoid radar detection by having panels on their sides that deflect or absorb the waves emitted by the radar. The first of these designs was the F-117 Nighthawk. It was used in both invasions in Iraq to fly in before all other aircraft in order to use bombs to destroy all of the enemy's anti-aircraft capabilities so that the rest of the aircraft could fly in and do their work without being shot down from ground-based defenses. The next two decades did not see any new designs for United States combat jets, as there wasn't a significant enough technological advantage for the government to see the purpose of spending billions of dollars on developing a new design. However, once the 21st century hit, that changed. The F-22 Raptor is, to this day, the greatest fighter aircraft on Earth. It can fly almost completely undetected by ground-based or air-based radar, and it carries enough missiles to take out entire squadrons of enemy aircraft from miles away. The Raptor launches weapons by opening missile bay doors on its underside and then closing them again after the weapon launch to reform the stealthy rounded frame. However, these excellent technological advances come at a price, so only around 120 of them have actually been built by the United States. And, because this tall technology is so advanced, the United States has kept the design secret and has not shared it with any other country. In 2006, the frame and the general idea behind the F-22 was combined with a more multi-role platform and a lot more of the modern internet connections with wireless communications through satellites to create the F-35 Lightning II. The F-35 can conduct bombing, can fight other aircraft, can scout, and can even serve as a long-distance communication relay station. However, the F-35 is more than just a weapon. It is also a political tool. The United States has used arms sales of F-35s along with manufacturing deals for the different parts and spare munitions for the F-35 to create tightened military connections with various countries around the world, including Europe to tighten its bonds with countries against Russia, in the Middle East to tighten its bonds with countries who stand against Iran, and in Asia to tighten its bonds with countries that stand with the U.S. against China. However, all these advantages, both military and political, come at a cost. The price tag for this entire program was, just in the United States, $2 trillion. That's one-tenth of the annual spending of the whole country spread out over only a period of two decades. That's a huge cost for any military or political development, and so this program, unlike many of the other aircraft in U.S. history, has been very politically controversial. To balance this out, the United States military is resorting more and more to using very cheap drones for patrol, bombing, and even sometimes anti-aircraft purposes. Also, to avoid the costs of developing a whole new fighter jet, the United States military put a modernization program into the F-15, producing the F-15X. It looks very similar to the original F-15, but carries a lot more modern features and much more potent missiles. I hope you learned something new about the progression of fighter aircraft in the United States military. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and see you next time.